Hello. Today I'd like to show you how you can join up some batting scraps. We all get scraps of batting at the end of our quilt. Sometimes there can be narrow strips, they can be perhaps a bit wider and we haven't necessarily got a project in mind that takes little bits. So I thought I'd just quickly show you how you can join them together. So here I've got two bits of batting, two offcuts, and I would make sure that the edges I'm going to join are straight. So I might, now these might be long strips and you might find a way of just trimming them nice and straight. So I would just trim, in this case, because they're small, I can do this. I'm trimming them both together. This is a synthetic batting. It works for pretty much any batting though. And because I want to be able to lay them together, because I'm actually just going to put them together and over sew that join. If you overlap them, you're going to get a ridge in your quilt, which may not be what you're after. So I've just got a nice straight edge that's going to sit together and I'm going to join it. Now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and do that. I've got a really dark thread in my machine so that you can see what I'm doing. You most likely would have a white or light colored thread unless you're using it in a quilt that color's not going to show through. But if it might show through at all, I would use a matching thread. So I'm going to, on my machine, I'm going to set it to a zigzag, which just swings right across. And I'm going to make it go as large as it will go. On this machine, it goes up to a width of six and a length of six, which is really good. And I'm now just going to feed that through my machine with those just set, butted together like that. And I'm just going to swing the stitch right across that join line. And if you've got a walking foot, it's possibly a good idea because it will give you an even feed. And on this machine, there's a dual feed built in. So that's another option. So I've got it so that that uh, where the two pieces of batting meet is right in the middle of my foot where the swing is going to be going either side of. So you can see this feeds nicely. Just take it slowly. Make sure that that join is staying in the middle of where you're going. And you can do quite long pieces like this. If you've got a wider piece here that won't fit in, just roll it over so that you can manage it in that space there. But I have found I get lots of bits of batting and I'm sure other quilters do as well. So you can see, because I've used that dark thread, what I've done there. And uh, that's a very acceptable join in my opinion. Um, if I pull on that, it doesn't come apart. I can't feel a bump or anything there. So that's just going to sit fine in a quilt. Now you could have a whole patchwork of batting inside your quilt. I'll quickly show you another method though. If for some reason you didn't want a straight line or you've got irregular shaped pieces of batting. Um, again, I've got my batting scraps here and I'm just going to do kind of like a wiggly line this time. So uh, just a little bit different. As I said, it, there may be some reason you don't want a, a straight join or you might have some wiggly bits. But So I've just overlapped that a little bit and I'm going to just use my rotary cutter and I'm just going to cut a wiggly line through both layers. I want the wiggly line to be the same on this layer as on this one. So by just overlapping, that's how I'm going to achieve that. So I'm just going to cut this. So you're not really wasting very much, just this little strip here. And we can take this piece off. We don't need this one. And the same with the piece underneath. And if you just leave those together, you can see that that fits really well. So the same thing now, I'm going to go back to the machine and I'm going to do exactly the same as I did on the straight line, but I'm going to feed it through so that it follows that wiggly line so that I get a wiggly join. And there are other products and things that you can use to help you join batting. Sometimes you don't have them to hand. Um, so this is just a, a method you can use at home with what you've got. You can, of course, do this by hand. You can do an overcast stitch by hand, but I'm definitely a machine, so. So just keep an eye on where your wiggle's going and follow that around so that it's stitching either side of where the two pieces of batting meet.
batting sits together so nicely. It's quite hard to see sometimes. <laughs> Right, so there I've got a, a wiggly line join, it doesn't have to be that accurate, it, it's just you could do it on an angle, there's all sorts of things you could do to, to use up your batting um, and almost no wastage that way, you can join quite small pieces because actually you can't feel that join inside a quilt that, that's quilted, that will just absolutely disappear. So I just thought that might be helpful to use up some of those bits and pieces that tend to hang around and overtake our lives. Thank you.